At least 19 children have now died across the country from the strep A disease. That's according to the UK Health Security Agency, who's attributed the unseasonal high number of cases uh, to a return to social mixing after COVID lockdowns. Meanwhile, the government's introduced protocols to address supply issues of some of the drugs used to treat the bacteria. Well, joining me now is Amish Patel, who's a board member of the National Pharmacy Association. Um, a very good morning to you, Amish Patel. Thanks so much for talking to us. So uh, these serious shortage protocols have been triggered. What difference do they make? Hi, good morning. Thank you. So in a serious shortage protocol, it gives the pharmacist the opportunity to use their professional judgment to essentially give an alternative form of the medicine. So penicillin, for example, which is the first line treatment for strep A, it comes in liquid and tablet form. So if a doctor prescribes a liquid, we will use our professional judgment to change it to a tablet if that's what we've got in stock and we just can't get the liquid. So the idea being that the patient gets the medication they need in a timely manner and it's not having to put burden back into the NHS on doctors or in the emergency departments. OK, so if someone comes in with a penicillin prescription, a pharmacist like yourself doesn't have it, they don't have to go back to their doctor to get another prescription. That's the main difference. You can give an alternative. That's exactly that. That's correct. OK, so uh, how great is the shortage of penicillin and how good is the availability of alternatives? So yesterday uh, afternoon, I did manage to get a few packs of tablets. Uh, well, I did order them. I waited for them to come in today. Uh, but checking in this morning, all penicillin seems to be out of stock again. So it seems like there might be a little bit of a drip feed of certain products coming back, uh, but it's still pretty scarce and difficult to obtain. And... Are the antibiotics being prescribed as they normally would, or do you think the GPs are being exceptionally cautious at the moment and prescribing more readily than they might do otherwise, given the strep A cases? No, I definitely don't think there's being an inappropriate prescribing of antibiotics, should we say. You know, we are seeing that there is a higher incidence of bacterial infections this time of year compared to previous years with strep A, for example. Um, so... We are seeing an increase in demand for antibiotics compared to previous years, but I do believe it has all been appropriately done. A doctor, I was in A&E myself the other night with my daughter, and I was talking to a doctor there, and they were saying how you know, patients are requesting antibiotics, but they're still refusing to give it because it's not necessary. So the doctors are playing their part at the same time. And, and are you confident that everyone who needs anti antibiotics will be able to get them? Yeah, you know, and then the pharmacies like myself, we are working closely with our GP surgeries local to us to, on a daily basis, giving them a stock update of what we have got, what we haven't got. It might not always be penicillin, but there are alternative antibiotics as well, like amoxicillin and zithromycin uh, that can be prescribed. So, you know, I'm so far I'm yet to find a patient that's been completely without and that's then been in serious trouble afterwards. Are you seeing more and more people coming in and just wanting advice, asking you questions, showing concerns about strep A? Are you seeing an increase in, in, in people talking to you about it? Oh, most definitely. I think previous to this year, uh, you know, we never really talked about strep A at all in the community pharmacy. It just wasn't a, 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 big, a big topic. It's always been around and there's always been cases, but nothing like this year. And so in general, you know, we do see an increase in demand this time of year for general infections, coughs, colds. But strep A has definitely been a big increase. Speaking to a GP colleague of mine even, uh, who's been qualified for many years, uh, they were saying how scarlet fever in his whole career, never seen a case, and then he saw four in a week. So there's definitely, you know, a, a lot more going on this year than previous years. And whether it's due to COVID, due to lockdowns, something will have to be investigated to find out the root cause of it. Well, yes. And, and what's your advice then to worried parents? What should they be looking out for? And if they see certain symptoms, what should they do? Yeah, so look, the main common symptoms are fever, sore throat. Now, as with most infections, actually, our bodies are very capable of dealing with them, of fighting them off. And you don't always need antibiotics. So if you are worried, speak to your pharmacist as a first port of call or speak to your GP, who you can get through to. They'll advise on how to manage the symptoms to begin with and you know, signs to look out for should they be anything more serious to concern. Um, and yeah, take it step by step at the end of the day. Like I said, our bodies are capable quite often, most times they're not. We don't need antibiotics uh, to fight off infections. OK, well, Amish Patel uh, from the National Pharmacy Association, thanks so much for, for your time and your advice. We really appreciate it.